In this video tutorial, we're going to be sharing with you a unique Photoshop technique that is really fun to do because it creates a really interesting effect and it's really super simple. But the principles are interesting because it really gives us a little bit of insight and in some of the different things that we can do with Photoshop that um, by using very basic techniques to create a really interesting effect and really get our creative ideas uh, flowing. And so what we're going to do for this example is we're going to kind of recreate this little collage effect that we've done. Now what looks like a fairly complicated setup, it's actually amazingly simple with just a couple of layer techniques here inside Photoshop. And so that's what we're going to be going through. So let's begin. Now we're going to be using Photoshop, of course, primarily, but we're going to cheat a little bit and use a little bit of Pixel Creator Pro along the way. So for those of you who have Pixel Creator Pro, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of some of these uh, functions. So first things first, let's just create a blank 10 by 10 canvas. I'm going to select the entire canvas by hitting Control A here in Photoshop or Command A for you Mac folks. And then I'm simply going to choose Add Aperture here inside Pixel Creator Pro. And all that's going to do is create a new image layer for which to work on. And then I'm going to come in here to Bridge, and I already have an image selected. So when I hit Insert Photo back over here in Photoshop, that image is dropped right into my layout. There's our image, and we'll go ahead and accept its placement. This image here is, a, is an image of my beautiful fiance Brandy, and we just had her maternity session done by Candace Ann Photography uh, up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I got to tell you, I was just absolutely blown away with the images. It really turned out just beautiful. So thank you, Candace, if you're watching. So now that we have our, our initial image layer in place, I'm just going to duplicate this image layer just using Control J here. Uh, on a PC or Command J on a Mac. And then back here on the original image layer, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool here in Photoshop and just draw out a small rectangle around her face area. If we hold the Shift key down, it'll constrain to a perfect square. That looks good right there. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a clipping mask and there's several ways to do that of course in Photoshop there's dozens of ways to do any one thing but what I like to do is simply hold down my alt key or option key on a Mac and click directly between two layers. See that little icon that appears and that is, tells us it's going to create a clipping mask which it is done. Now we don't actually really see anything happen um, but we are going to apply a layer style to this shape one layer. Not that that will have any great impact, but you'll see a little bit of change here. So on our layers uh, palette here, we're just going to choose the inner glow option. And we're going to change it to be black. We're going to change the blend mode to normal. And then we're going to come down here to the size and we can tweak the size. And then we're going to lower the opacity, something about like so, whatever we like just to get a nice subtle effect. So then what we're going to do is we're going to click on our guides tool here inside Pixel Creator Pro on our shape one layer and the margin field we're going to do negative 0.375 and what that does is creates a series of guidelines on the outside of our shape one layer exactly three-eighths of an inch to the outside edge. Then all we're going to do is set our foreground color to white we're going to grab our rectangle tool here and draw out a new rectangle. But we want to do that below our current shape one layer. So we'll click back on our original image layer and draw out another rectangle. Now, when I did that, it added that inner glow layer style that I applied to the first one. So we'll just delete that one. And let's just apply a drop shadow to this one. I always like to use the angle 135. It's been a long time Photoshop fetish of mine. Don't know why. It just That's what I decided one day that I was going to use for every drop shadow, and that's the way it's been ever since. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and let's just clear out our guidelines. So this is the, kind of the beginning of the effect. Now here's where the magic happens. What we're going to do is we're going to select these three layers. So we have our Shape 1 layer, 
our shape 2 layer which is actually making up this frame and then of course our original image layer and we're gonna come up here to layer new group from layers I'm gonna give this a name I'm gonna call it main opening click OK and then I'm gonna duplicate this group so over here in the layers palette we're gonna right click on the group and choose duplicate group and let's call it main opening a and here in the main opening a layer group I'm gonna expand that and we're never gonna change the image all we're gonna change is the shape one and shape two layers and watch what happens as I do that I'm just gonna free transform so that's control T here on a PC command T on a Mac and boom and I might even shift that just a pinch pretty cool stuff right so then back over here in main group main opening a let's duplicate the group again and let's call it B and then of course we'll expand B and again modify just the shape one and shape two layers and shift it again okay fun stuff now from here we'll just go ahead and keep duplicating the groups now I'm gonna change the naming convection to frame 01 and modify the shape 1 shape 2 now because these are vector shapes we can actually free transform these we can move the frame anywhere see how that's cool we can actually move the frame anywhere and we can also resize the frame without any loss of image quality so no worries there so that can be fun and then just keep going so let's just keep going duplicate group let's give it frame 02 modify shape 1 and shape 2 of the frame 02 group and you just keep going till you have an effect that you like and let's just do one more for this example back to shape one and shape two okay so you get the idea and you could just keep going on and on and on now in Photoshop we have the auto select group option so I'm gonna click on this back frame this very back one here which is in our main opening and adjust the shape one and shape two layers Maybe bring that frame out a little bit I just wanted something a little bit different there which is fine all right so that pretty well takes care of that first step in creating that effect so if we like this let's just go ahead and hit file save as to our desktop let's just call it collage frame 03 because I already have a couple versions of this and that's it so our effect is created and it's really a fun little effect now one thing that I do like to experiment with a little bit is changing the the order of our frame groups so for example right now you see this in my main image frame is below these two frames actually all three of these if I move this up in the layer stack though see now it's on top of and so I might click on this frame and actually move it of, the, of that one. And you could just kind of keep moving things around till you get the exact look that you want. Okay, so I'm just going to resave that because that's I like that a little bit better. Now here's a fun part too, is that now that we've created this effect, we've saved this as a layered Photoshop file, we could repopulate this same template with a different image so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into bridge and I'm gonna select a different image show you how that works let's go with this one right here I think that'll make a good image and then all we have to do is use a little known utility that nobody even probably knows exists but before we do that let's open up all of these layer groups 
Okay, so we've expanded all the layer groups, and I'm going to click on each of our image layers and hold my control key down, click on the next one. See how these two layers are selected? Let's keep going. There's another one, and another, and another, and another, and another. So all of our image layers are all selected in all the different groups. So what was that little function in Pixel Creator called? Well, if we go into Layout Tools, we call it MIP, which is multi-image. And I'll click on multi-image. And essentially what multi-image does is it'll place the exact same image in every selected image layer. So when I hit Process, it will go through and take the image that I selected in Bridge and populate that image into every single existing image layer. So it's going to replace our original image. And that's really uh, quick and efficient. It places that image in the exact same place on every single image layer, which is exactly what we need for this effect to work like we've designed it to work. Where you might use the multi-image in a real-world environment, another example would be, let's say you were did sports photography, and you had a template that, um, kind of like a photo package, okay? Um, so where you had multiple different size openings that you need the exact same image placed into. Uh, another popular use that I've used it for is when I'm creating uh, photo buttons. I have a template here in Photoshop which allows me to uh, create three inch photo buttons and so I can take one image and place it into I have six to a page and I could just place six of those uh, six you know that one image into six different photo buttons for me automatically so um, there are lots of different uses for that multi image but like I said a lot of people don't even know that that function exists but perfect example here now what we have here is a beautiful image but it doesn't really look like a whole lot, does it? And that's because all we have to do to recreate the effect is to go back through each of our groups and just create that clipping mask. So here's my image. Here's my shape one layer that I need to create the clipping mask for and just go do that for every single group. And we'll have that effect brought right back to us. Now, of course, because we have a different image, we're going to have to make some uh, small adjustments to that main opening. Actually, it was main opening B, technically speaking. So let's find that. There it is, main opening B. And let's just slide this frame. So we're going to adjust the shape one and shape two layers, free transform, over to her face. And I might make this a little bit bigger for this image. And then this frame here, I don't know what it is, frame 3, let's adjust it. We'll rotate it and let's reposition it. There we go. Let's go back and make a small adjustment to our main image opening again. And I might even just make this a little bit bigger. And then this one here, I might just adjust too. So you can just kind of adjust the frames, resize them, reposition them, um, whatever, whatever adjustments you think are necessary for this particular effect. And I tell you what, I'm going to actually take this main opening A and bring it above main opening B. Okay? So whatever changes that you want to make, whatever you think makes sense, make those adjustments, and there you have it. So have fun exploring that technique because it is a fun technique to use. Um, a lot of different things you can do with it and see what you can come up with. Another option, too, is this on this uh, bottom layer, we could just get rid of that original one, and then you can see how we eliminated that. If I set my background color to black, you don't have all of the original image. You just have kind of little bits and pieces of it showing. I kind of like the effect like that, though. Okay, so explore, have fun, and I hope you learned something. 
and thanks for watching.